I had young Carlos who's been driving me around, brought me from the airport. And he said, Brother Shambach, what's the greatest miracle you ever saw? I said, do you got three hours? <laughs> and I gave him the short version of it. And this is when I be believe that God opened the veil and allowed me to look into the future. We were in Birmingham, Alabama when I was with Brother Allen and a woman brought a little boy in four years of age who was born with 26 diseases. He had no male organs on his body. He was born blind and deaf and dumb. His tongue hanged out of his mouth and lay on his chin. Both arms and legs were twisted together and matted together. The elbows penetrated into his little tummy. His knees touched the elbows and he had no feet. Clubs, you don't put shoes on clubs, you put shoes on feet. And the mother brought that child in. I wrote the card out. I gave it to her in the afternoon service. I was preaching faith and she was there all week long. But the card was never called. Sometimes we get in too big of a hurry. We run into church, quick preacher, lay hands on me. Bible says lay suddenly, lay hands suddenly on no man. Some people need to sit down and hear the word of God preached. And they need to get those preconceived opinions and them doctrines of devils that they have in their, in their brain. And they need to hear the unadulterated word of God that God's not dead but he's alive and he's the same today as he was yesterday. That woman sat there with that boy three services a day. She came from another city like you did. The following Sunday she came after I preached in the afternoon. She said, Brother Shambach, I run out of money. Have you ever been there? And she said, my boy hadn't been prayed for yet. I said, I refuse to apologize for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost used Brother Allen in a different way. And every night he would minister, but it was in a different vein, and he didn't call the prayer cards. But she said, I've been staying in the hotel. I've been eating in restaurants. I've been giving in the offering three times a day, and I'm down to my last $20. I've got to go home tonight. Can you do something? I said, I can do one thing. If he don't call that prayer card tonight, I'll take that boy over to his trailer house and make him lay hands on that baby. I'll get him to the man of God. And I meant that. I would have done it. I, in, I was leading the singing that night and introduced Brother Allen and he popped out on the stage and he said, we're going to receive an offering tonight quickly. It's going to be an offering of faith. Don't get nervous. I'm not going to take another one. But I might. <laughs> and when he said, I want you to give an offering of faith, a puzzled look came on the faces of everybody, including me. I never heard him use that terminology before. And he said, now if you don't know what I mean by an offering of faith, he said, I want you to give God something you can't afford to give. Because if you can afford it, there's no faith attached to it. It's logical. Never heard that expression. The first thing I saw was that little woman. She had the baby in her hand, tossed in another woman's arms, and she come running. She was three-fourths of the way back, and she beat everybody down there. He was holding the buckets. And I saw that woman come running fast. I mean ran. 3,000 people in that auditorium. And she threw something in the bucket. I'm on the platform. I'm nosy now. I jumped off that platform. <laughs> and I looked in that bucket. Because that woman told me all she had was that $20 bill. And when I looked in that bucket, you know what I saw in that bucket? $20. She's in Birmingham, Alabama, and she lives in Knoxville, Tennessee. But she wanted a miracle. She needed something from God. She said, Lord, I'll walk home if you just heal my baby. When I saw that $20 bill, I ran behind the platform and I cried like a baby. I said, oh God, I've been trying to teach that woman faith all week. But I said, oh God, give me faith like that woman's got. I don't know whether I could do that. 
You don't know whether you can do it unless you're in a similar situation. That man of God received the offering, started preaching. He wasn't 15 minutes into that service when all of a sudden he said, He said, I'm, I see a big building. I said, oh, Lord, here we go on another trip. <laughs> this is how God used him. He said, it's a big old white building. I'm sitting there unmoved because I hear it all the time. He said, I'm inside the building now. And he said, I, oh, there's no doubt where I am. He said, I hear all them babies crying. It's the maternity ward in this hospital. He said, a little baby was born. He said, I see 12 doctors around him. He said, that little baby was born with 12, 14, 21, 20, 26 major diseases. And when he said that, I sat up and I said, my God, tonight's that baby's night. Tonight's that baby's night. He said, the doctor said the baby wouldn't live to see its first birthday. But he said, the doctor's wrong. He said, that baby's approaching four. He said, I see mother stuffing a suitcase. She's going on a trip. Another lady's with her. Put the baby in a bassinet. It's in the back seat of an old Ford. He said, I see the Tennessee-Alabama border. He said, that car's pulling in on the parking lot. He said, lady, you're here tonight. Bring me your baby now. God's going to give you 26 miracles. Now. Ooh. Not tomorrow, Benny. Now. God's going to give you 26 miracles. That little woman brought that baby. Four years of age. Put it in the man of God's hands. And he started to walk back and forth on that platform. I leaped from my seat and walked with him. 3,000 people stood to their feet. He said, I want everybody to close your eyes and pray with me. I said, not me, mister. I'm going to watch this one. I've been waiting all week for this. And don't you all look so sanctified. You're just like I am. You want to see something too. <laughs> and I'm standing there right next to him. And the first thing I saw was that tongue laying on the chin, snap like a rubber band. <laughs> And it went in his mouth for the first time in four years. Those little blind eyes, you didn't know whether they were blue or brown or what color they were because it was nothing but milky, solid milk. You knew the boy was blind, couldn't see. But I saw two whirlpools in those eyes. And all of a sudden, you could see brand new blue eyes coming through the milky colored condition. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about a God that's not dead, but a God that's alive. Thank God for his anointing. The next thing I saw was those arms and legs began to snap simultaneously as they kicked out for the first time. Standing there in front of those people, there's no shoes on clubs. Those clubs were there. But I saw God create feet on that little boy's legs I saw I used to buy my children we used to buy them silly putty when they were kids I don't know whether they have that now or not but they used to make things out of that stuff and it just looked like God was using silly putty to put a foot on the end of that boy's body people's hands were raised some were fall, falling under the power. Some that didn't go down fell down. I mean, you were, we knew we were in the presence of an awesome God. Faith had nothing to do with this. This was God working in the midst of his people. This was a sovereign act of God. Mama standing over here on this side of the platform with her hands raised, tears streaming down her face. He put the child down. This boy never saw his mama, never spoke, never walked, never talked. And when he put that boy down, he took his first little steps. And when he saw mama, he ran after her. I'm running after him. 
he leaped into his mama's arms, wrapped his arms around her, and I heard him say his first words, Mama, 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 Mama. Twelve real chairs, you in wheelchairs, listen to me. You that are watching by television, I want you to hear it. Twelve wheelchairs on this side of the platform. Like a sergeant commanded all twelve of them to stand at attention, all twelve stood up at one time. And they walked out of those wheelchairs. Some spinal cords were broken, severed because of motorcycle accidents. 3,000 people watching what was taking place. And all of a sudden, like a maestro leading a great chorus, every eye went to the stretcher case. 13, 14 stretchers on this side, like they knew what was going to happen. Everybody in those wheelchairs got up and walked out totally healed. And while we're standing on the platform, people began to file down the aisle. Back in those days, in 1957, the hearing aids were like transistor radios. They were pulling them out of their ears and out of their pockets where they had them, and there were two dozen of them laying on the platform. They didn't need them any longer. People started taking glasses off and laying them on the platform. Every cane, every crutch, and every walker they were bringing them down, walking normally. They were healed while they were seated out there. I always say nobody laid hands on them, but somebody did lay hands on them. It was the nail-scarred hand of Calvary that night. Can you shout amen? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Here comes a half a dozen people with different parts of the congregation Six white canes with six inches of red at the bottom, totally blind, and their eyes popped open. Women lost four and five dress sizes when tumors just disappeared. Every person in the building was healed. Every person was healed, a divine sovereign act of God. And people ask me why, how, why and how did it happen like that? I can't but have one answer, that God lifted the veil to show me what he's going to do in this last day. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. It's not going to be two out of 10 or three out of seven. It's not gonna be eight out of 10, but I believe we're living in the day when everybody's gonna get healed by the power of God. No man will take glory for it, but it'll be God working through his people. You are the anointed ones of God. Can you raise your hands and shout amen?